Hi friends, how are you doing? It is May 25. There's six days left in this month. This has gone by fast. We're supposed to go painting out on our house today with our neighbor. And so it's going to be really hot then. It's supposed to be up in the 90s. We have the air conditioner running as does everybody else. The trees have leafed out here. The birds have come back and they're singing. You can hear some singing. I've been coming out here the past few mornings early before everybody's air is on and before the sun's out and it's just been nice. Um, I've been catching a couple of birds on my little bird net app. You, um, you can download that and it's really neat. You can just um, get it to play and you can catch all kinds of birds if you don't know what kinds they are. Um, with all the trees, I can't see any of them, so I can only only know what they are by the sound. But my plants are doing well back here. I've got two really tall tomato plants. Um, one's got a really thick stem, and it's got at least two clusters, or we're going to have clusters of cherry tomatoes for salad, so I'm excited about that. The other one is the one I've been having trouble with, aphids, on it. Um, I bought them both at the same time. I planted them both on Easter Sunday and they have gone over their wire cage in their pot here on the back deck. So um, I don't know why one has aphids and one didn't, but I found this home remedy. You use warm water, uh, dish soap, and they said crushed garlic, but I used garlic powder and the thing had so many aphids on it, but after the first spraying, it really took care of it. So um, that is something that I have tried and it works. You need a quart and so I have a little spray bottle you can get at Walmart for like 97 cents or a dollar. And it's, it's a quart and it works good. So if a couple of drops of um, dish soap in there and a teaspoon, or no not, it was a few shakes. It didn't say how much crushed garlic, but I just put in um, a few shakes of um, powdered garlic, gar garlic powder, and it worked. And while there's still a few aphids, um, it took care of a lot of them. So if you want a home remedy, that is one that I have tried and it works. Somebody else gave us a tomato plant, um, me actually, on Mother's Day, even though I'm not a mother. I was very pleased. Um, they gave me four plants. Three were in a pot together, which included an iris and I think a lily and something else I'm not sure. But when she gave it to me, she said that you can put these in your yard and they're low maintenance flowers. And they also gave me a tiny tomato plant and it's about this big now. It's doubled or yeah, doubled in size, and it's doing well back here as well. And I had a um, hyacinth, and today I just moved um, two of the bulbs into a smaller plant. The little cups that the tomato plants, that we bought the tomato plants in, excuse me, I put, um, I put a hyacinth one in, in each of those. So there's still two in the bigger pot, but they were... There wasn't much space, and I moved them to the back deck. They've been out front. But I didn't talk to you, I didn't start this video to talk to you about my plants. <laughs> and I don't know if they're that interesting to you, but just the fact that I can grow plants is cool to me. I pretty much stick with ivy and aloe vera. I've got two pots of ivy and, or two pots of aloe vera. One's the mother plant and one's the daughter plant, and a bunch of ivy that I've restuck from the original pot. So that is about me there, but usually um, I, I like flowers and stuff, so um, if I get a chance I will grow some at my new house. But I came to read you a story before it got too hot, before time got away from us and we had to move and I didn't have a beautiful setting back here anymore. Our backyard is, after we get up a fence, is there's no trees around so I'm gonna miss that and it's beautiful and the um, the squirrels were playing around this morning and the birds singing so I will miss that but we are in book four and we're on the story um, the borrowed axe which is the last one in this volume four 
So, and this story is found in 2 Kings 6. So, going to see if there was a picture on the front or the back cover that goes with this one, but not this one. Okay. This is called the Borrowed Axe. The boys of Prophet Elisha's school crowded closer together on their benches, trying to make room for the new pupils. But it was no use. There just wasn't room. The boy with the red coat, we'll call Jared, barefooted, Jared had walked many miles that he might attend Prophet Elisha's school where boys were taught to be teachers for God. But alas, the schoolhouse was far too small. Would Jared and the new pupils have to go home? So here's Prophet Elisha teaching, and there's all the boys stuck together on the bench, and look at all the boys still coming in. There's even a guy at the window. So this is Jared. When school let out, the boys talked together. What could they do about their too small school? One of the boys pointed toward the River Jordan. Let's take our axes and go to the river, he said, and cut down trees to build a larger school. It's a good idea, said an older boy, and let's ask Prophet Elisha to go with us. The other boys agreed, but Jared hung his head. He had no axe and no money to buy one. There's Jared, maybe three of his best friends. They're pointing down to the trees by the river. Could you not borrow an axe? asked the older boy. So Jared went to a neighbor's house and asked if he might borrow an axe. You may borrow my axe, said the neighbor, if you will take good care of it. I will take, very, take good care of your axe, promised Jared. Very good care of it. See, his neighbor is working in wood, so he needs his axe. But he'll be happy to let Jared borrow it. As long as he takes good care of it. One morning, when the sun was half up, the boys shouldered their axes and walked with Prophet Elisha down, to the, down the trail to the River Jordan. The river wound in and out, in and out, in and out, like a snake w wiggling through the valley. Here and there on its banks were groves of trees. Tall trees, short trees, crooked trees, and trees that were straight. What kind of trees do you think they need to build their house? Their little schoolhouse. They need straight trees. Each boy chose a tree to cut down. Jared chose one near the river's edge. He swung the borrowed axe and made a cut. Again and again and again, he swung the axe with all his might. Pitchy, piney chips flew this way and that. Then suddenly, without warning, what do you think's going to happen? There he is, cutting on his tree. He got hot, he took off his jacket. There's the nice river. And it's not very clean. I think it's the Jordan. It's kind of muddy. Uh-oh. The axe head flew off the axe handle. A plop. A splash. It sank out of sight. Jared looked where the axe head had fallen, but the water was too muddy to see it and too deep to wade in and feel for it. Alas, master, for it was borrowed, he cried to prophet Elisha. I don't know where Elisha is in that. See, he goes to make a cut and there it's gone. What happened? There it is. It plopped into the water. It looks like the water's funny, but you know how you dive in and the water goes up? That's what's happening there. Elisha's probably out of view. Maybe he was over here nearby. Where did it fall? Prophet Elisha asked. Jared showed him the place. Prophet Elisha cut down a stick. Then, asking God for help, he threw the stick into the river where the axe head had fallen. The boys watched to see what would happen. They saw the stick floating on the water. And then... What do you think's gonna happen? Now everybody's, there's Prophet Elisha and he's got the stick. See, you can't see in that water. Up, 
up, up through the muddy water rose the axe head. Up, up, up to the surface of the water. And there it floated beside the stick, like a toy boat on the river. Take it up, said Prophet Elisha. Joyfully, Jared splashed in after it. He fastened the axe head tightly to the axe handle and finished cutting down his tree. Now, this is an iron axe head. And if you know anything about heavy objects, they don't float. So just the fact that there it is floating next to that stick, that is just amazing and a miracle. With a push and a pull, the boys dragged the tree logs along the trail. They split the logs into slabs the right size and built a new and larger school. Now the boys wouldn't be too crowded. There would be room enough for all. No one would have to go home. They could all stay at Prophet Elisha's school and learn to be teachers for God. See, here they are, way down the trail, bringing the logs. And here they've got, they're kind of using this log as a seesaw and cutting these boards. And the guys at the top, I think this is Jared, the guys at the top are building on. They'll probably knock down this wall in between when they get finished. And that's Prophet Elisha overseeing the work. And they'll have a bigger school. And that's the end of that. And I believe that is the end of this book. So, I always liked that story. I thought that was really neat. Um, I always thought it would be neat, cool to uh, be able to throw something heavy in and um, have it have it float up. But of course, at that point, I didn't I didn't need anything um, heavy to float. But poor Jared did, and God made it happen. So that was really neat. Well, this has been a shorter story, but I look forward to sharing more with you. I think we've got about three more stories, and um, that will be the end. And maybe I can share something else. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Um, hopefully you do. Um, I look forward to sharing more again. Hope you're staying cool, um, staying out of the too much heat in the summer wherever you are be stay safe um, and uh, try to keep going with the good health practices you should always wash your hands that's never out of vogue so um, I'll see you in the next video bye